Hey everybody, it's Brooks Kubik and John Wood. We're back for the Dinosaur Radio podcast. Um, this is episode nine. And uh, John, what would you like to cover today? Brooks, um, you've spent a lot of time over the last year talking about the bull worker. I think that people would like to hear some more information about that. I know you've covered it a little bit in your newsletters, but uh, you can obviously get in a little bit more detail um, in uh, in video form. Sure. Well, the bull worker is a device that is almost an exercise device that is almost as old as I am. Uh, I think it came into popularity in the mid 60s, very early 70s, and uh, was quite a big deal back in the day. Um, a lot of people may remember uh, the uh, famous weightlifter and actor Dave Prowse, uh, who famously played the body, not the voice, but the body of Darth Vader in the original Star Wars movies. And uh, he was a uh, bull worker distributor in England and had a magazine uh, about bull worker fitness and so on. Mm -hmm. That's where I saw it first. And when I was a kid growing up, you saw bull worker ads in like every magazine that, that there was, um, you know, Life magazine, uh, sports magazines, um, anything and everything in the world had a bull worker ad. Comic books had the bull worker ad. I mean, we were, we were inundated with them. It was a really big thing. Uh, for some reason, I don't recall ever owning one, seeing one, or using one. I must have because all of our fathers or big brothers or uncles, you know, everybody knew someone who had a bull worker, but um, I, don't, I don't recall using one. And I remember a couple of years ago, I did an article, an email that I sent to my email list. And, you know, I was saying, you know, bull worker was a big deal. I never had one. Would it have worked? Gosh, who knows? Probably not as well as weights would have. Uh, I got on the weights bandwagon. I never got on the bull worker bandwagon. And, um, you know, uh, I don't have any bull worker memories to share with you, but maybe I'll try one someday. Something like that. It was kind of non committal, perhaps a little condescending. I just wasn't a big bull worker fan. And uh, I didn't know anything about it. And I got some emails from some of my readers who said, you know, hey, Brooks, I've been using one my whole life and it's really good. Or Brooks, my dad got one in 1970 and he's used it religiously ever since. And he's 70 now and he's in great shape. He's, you know, very hard and strong and fit. And he attributes that to using the bull worker four or five times a week half an hour each workout. And, and as I said, he's been doing that for his whole life. And so I, you know, I got enough of these that I thought, okay, well, maybe there's something to it. Um, so I did the logical thing, which is I actually um, decided to test it, not to read about it, not to just rely on what other people said, uh, not to decide in my own head, it either works or it doesn't work, but to try it. So I got a vintage bull worker. Um, this is, this is it. It is a bull worker too. Um, has a little strength meter in it. And, um, this is probably about, 50 years old or close to. And the amazing thing, as I said, I bought it vintage. It's, you know, used or gently used. It's almost like brand new it, and it, it works really well. And you can do a whole lot of interesting exercises with it. And I have been having great fun with it. Um, you said you had a bull worker. I do. I have the same model. The same one. This is, uh, and yeah, I, who knows? It's 50, 60 years old and it, it looks, uh, it looks bomb proof. I mean, surprisingly for something that was a manufactured good, 
uh, at that period of time, they uh, they did a nice job. I mean, these um, they probably did it too well for their purposes because this it, it's not going to wear out. No, it's not. Do, do you have the strength meter out? Yeah. On your yeah, yeah. mine's okay. slightly slightly different. It's it's a little thicker. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you have an older model compared to mine or a newer newer model, but you know, as I said, th these are like maybe 50 years old. At least, yeah. 40, 50. No, and no. they work great. Um, and they tied right in with the isometric training that I've been doing. I got bitten by the isometric bug after reading about isometric training in some of the material that you put up in the Iron League. And coincidentally, that was the summer of COVID, the summer of 2020. Gyms were closed. People were scrambling for effective ways to train at home. Um, I was training out in the backyard with some very tippy vintage York squat stands to use for squats. I uh, knocked the squat stands over one day, racking the bar, which is why you should always use a power rack instead of tippy squat stands. And so I decided, okay, I need a safer exercise for my legs. And long story short, I started doing isometric lunges, which led me to do other isometric exercises. And I had a lot of fun with those and got good results. And that made me start rethinking the whole bull worker thing and thinking about all the guys that uh, are on my newsmail, uh, my uh, daily newsletter email list. Um, guys who read the Dinosaur Files newsletter who were saying it's a good thing. So as I said, I bought one. And um, I was very surprised in using this to find out how effective a tool it is. Um, there are bull worker exercises you can do for the upper body and for the lower body. Um, I don't use it for lower body exercises. I do other isometrics for the lower body. Uh, I don't use it for all of my upper body exercises, but for some, it is really effective. And there are some things you can do with it that you really can't do with any other piece of equipment, at least not with anything that, um, that I'm familiar with. Mm. Um, it's strong as can be. Um, there are, there are, are charts and formulas out there where people try to calculate the pressure it takes to close this thing. Yeah. It is hard. I, I mean, it is not easy in some of the arm and shoulder exercises, some of the chest exercises. It's not easy to get it halfway closed. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, a very super pressure thing. And um, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a good piece of equipment. Um, so I've been using it, oh gosh, every day. For, well, not every day, because I don't work out every day. Um, but I've been using it in all my workouts since probably about February now. And um, I'm really impressed with it. Mm. Um, it's a very good addition to the arsenal. And I like it so much. I've got a carrying case for a new ball worker that I got because I was curious to see how it would compare with, um, with the vintage model. And the answer is, can you spot the difference? Aside from the handles on the middle there, it's a little bit thinner. Well, you got green handles here and red handles here. Yeah. And other than that, it's almost exactly the same design, mm -hmm. which means the original design was perfect because they haven't had to change it. Mm -hmm. um, you got a better power meter. It's more, more detailed. Mm -hmm. um, that works well. You've got one, two, 
three of the grips, but I only have two hands, so I only use two at a time. But it does make it easier to do a thing like, um, you know, if you want to do a two-handed exercise here while your foot is bracing it down here, works better for that. Mm -hmm. The um, wire is a little bit stronger. And the interesting thing with this is that push it down like that, pull it out. Okay, now you can pull out the spring. And they have five different springs. So you can change them out. One that I have in here right now is the uh, number four, which is next to the strongest. And I just changed the spring out in like, what, 15 seconds, 20 seconds? Mm -hmm. And it's very fast. The um, Springs fit in here, I mean here. We've got the white spring. Let's get all hooked, hooked together, of course, being springs, but you've got the white, which is a beginner spring, and that's very lightweight resistance. Yellow, which I actually like for two or three real, there you go, two or three really difficult exercises where they're sort of, it's like leverage exercises where if you're doing dumbbells, you use light dumbbells. Mm -hmm. So it's good for that. Got the gray spring, which is essentially, I'm told, I uh, don't know if this is accurate, but I've been told that that's about the strength of the spring in the vintage bull worker. So if you have a vintage bull worker, that's the gray spring strength. You've got a um, black spring, which is what I have in here now. And the heaviest spring, which is the red spring, pull that up to the, the uh, lighter one. Oops, there we go. So you can see that white, the lighter one compared to the, the heavier red one. Mm -hmm. And this is strong enough that I will use it for a couple of exercises. And it's as much as I want, as much as I can handle. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a bear. And for most of the exercises that I'm doing now, um, I will use the vintage bull worker, which is the strength of the gray, the uh, gray spring, or the new model, which I have the black spring in. And um, those two, those two will give you a workout. Uh, one of my readers told me that John Paul Sigmarson, the uh, world's strongest man champion, what he won the world's strongest man three or four times. Something like that. That, that he trained with the bull worker. Hmm. And, you know, if you think about it, uh, anyone who wins the world's strongest man competition is probably fairly strong. And if he was able to use a bull worker, uh, probably that means it's a fairly good piece of equipment and can hold up to some serious use by someone who's got some, uh, some serious strength and power. So I absolutely shocked myself with this thing and I'm not doing a sales endorsement um, because they're paying me to do a sales endorsement or something. Um, I'm doing a sales endorsement to the degree that's what this is because mm -hmm. I think this is a really good product. Um, I mean, it's a really good product. So I was surprised. I was actually kind of shocked. Um, you have to be careful with the bull worker. If, if you used one long enough um, in enough different workouts to, to really test how it works for you? I play around with it. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I've, I've used it extensively for a long time, but um, you know, I've certainly put it through its paces. It's, um, it's really interesting. It's one of those things where, you know, like anything else, as you try it, you get better at it. 
Mm -hmm. You got better angles, better, you know, better positions for your, uh, you know, to hold it. And um, it, it's really, it's really a much better thing than I thought. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I wish I'd been doing when I was a kid um, and had been doing ever since. Mm -hmm. The, uh, in my mind, the bull worker is a very good tool to hit the upper body, particularly the upper back and shoulders. And there are some exercises that you can do for the upper back and shoulders that you really can't duplicate any other way. Mm -hmm. And upper back and shoulder strength means you're doing all the things to help protect your shoulders, your shoulder joints, which are among the most injury prone joints in the body by nature of the, the ball and socket in the shoulder is, is a very complicated joint and complicated means there are all kinds of things that can go wrong. Um, if you are, you know, take my sport, wrestling, okay? You shoot your hands out at somebody, so you're exerting force this way. That person is exerting force back against you. So, you know, your, your, your hand is hitting his hands, his body, driving back, and easily, if you don't have strong shoulders, that can cause a problem. You also, you shoot in like this to grab someone's leg. He blocks you with his arm. Well, what's he doing? He's hitting your arm from the side and knocking it in. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to resist the force. You know, arms being knocked in, you have to be able to resist that. Mm -hmm. Shoot in for a leg and he pushes out, kicks back with his leg. Well, okay, now you're having to resist the force that way. And you might be fully extended. You know, you might have your hand on someone's leg and that leg might be pulling back, kicking forward, moving to the side, moving this way. Mm -hmm. And you're going with it with the arm extended. That's all shoulder force. You know, it's all, you know, so your shoulder is constantly being put in compromised positions. And the more muscle strength that you have, the more muscle you have around the shoulder and through the upper back, I think is going to be protective. It's a form of armor, if you will. And I'm sure John, from your football experience, you would be able to explain various things that happen on the football field where your arm and shoulder are subject to those same kind of unusual stresses. Um, you also in football, of course, you're you're hitting the shoulder mm -hmm. a lot, right? Yeah. Hitting the, you know, hitting your opponent when you're blocking or tackling, hitting the ground when you're landing on the ground. Well, the same thing happens in wrestling. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you get thrown, you land on your shoulder, you land on your upper back, um, you hit the other guy, and you know it's shoulder to shoulder contact, chest to chest contact. Um, you know, the the more armoring that you have for the shoulder, the better. And the bull worker is something that can make your shoulders and upper back um, as well protected, I think, as anything else out there. I'm not saying that they will eliminate the need to do other exercises for the upper body, um, but as a supplement, working with your pressing, your chin ups, your pull ups, your dips. They're hard to beat. Um, and for some exercises like isometric lateral raises, they are just a wonderful tool, a wonderful, very simple unit. Um, you know, we, we don't really have the ability on the Zoom call to, you know, go through a list of exercises, show how to do them. But if you went to the Bullworker channel, you'd see lots of exercises and how to do them. Um, I demonstrate a lot of them. I have short videos on my uh, Instagram channel. So you can get some of the exercises that way. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what, it's, um, it's a surprisingly good piece of equipment. And so, you've covered, covered the Bulworker several uh, occasions, on several occasions in, in many you know, issues of the dinosaur files over the last year. We've um, talked about Bulworker training primarily in the, um, the April and May 2021 issues. Okay, so the two most recent, and then uh, as far as other 
resources. You've also got your Instagram channel where you've got some videos and uh, some other things that are involved. So if somebody's interested in your take and wants to see what you're doing, those would be worth checking out. Yeah. And by the time this video comes out, um, there will be some interesting videos uh, showing some of the upper body exercises that I like to do with the bull worker. Look for those, and in particular, look for the effect, the training effect on the muscles of the shoulder girdle, the upper back, the shoulders. There are some freaky trap exercises with the bull worker that are unlike anything that, that I've ever seen or done before. You know, one of them, I'll, 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 you know, just give people, I, I'm going to sit here and squeeze this because I'm not in workout mode. But if you have this over your head and you squeeze it, so you're trying to push your hands towards your ears, mm -hmm. okay? The effect on your upper body, on your trap muscles, is incredible yeah. from a squeeze, okay? Movements like that. And of course, you're not really moving because the, you know, the pressure of the cables, the, the spring is such that you maybe move it that much. Mm -hmm. But think of your traps on the upper back. They're pre pressed in like this. And you never do that with, with any other kind of training. No. I mean, I, you, you could do it with, with pulleys and cables or something, I think. Maybe. But you know, you, you don't really get that, that movement. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you think about it, that's kind of a natural movement. It, it's different than a shoulder shrug exercise where you're coming straight up. Mm -hmm. It's in like yeah. that. And it's a really funky thing to do. It's, it's, it's like, wow, that's interesting. Trudy took some photos and I was like, holy mackerel, my traps are just you know, they look like alien life forms. I never knew they did that. I never knew you could exercise your traps by doing that. Another exercise that I like with them is, um, see, we're running into the, the Zoom problem, but if you had your arms overhead and you pulled down, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, you know, that movement, again, it's arms up here, coming down like that, trying to. Yeah. Okay. It is like the movement of a pull down as far as the lat muscles are concerned. Mm -hmm. You don't go very far, that's about as far as you are. It's like you're engaging your lats. But the other thing that you're doing is all of the upper back muscles are pulling down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're engaging your traps when you're doing that. It's the complete reverse of the other movement. And I, you know, I'm like, again, it's like, I never knew that you engaged those muscles to that degree with that movement. You know, it's like, that's really interesting. And so I'm working on the theory that if you have a joint that is subject to real world force in a variety of different directions and from different angles, you want to protect it in all of those, at all of those angles and all of those ranges of movement. Mm -hmm. And what I found to my surprise is that the bull worker is a way to help do that job. That barbells won't do it, dumbbells won't do it, cables won't do it, uh, pull ups, chin ups, dips, lamp machine, uh, Nautilus machine pullovers. Uh, you know, fill in the blank. They're all good, but they won't do the complete job. There are some things that are missing and the bolt worker gets the job done. So from that perspective alone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it's a really good, really good piece of equipment. And um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't have two of them if, uh, if I didn't like using them and think that they had, you know, merit. So that's my bolt worker report. Well, and I think it's important because this has happened to me probably several times more recently than it, than it's been happening with more uh, greater frequency. And it sounds like it's been happening to you in that 
I'm revisiting certain things that I thought I knew about mm -hmm. and noticing details or noticing ideas or coming up with different ways of training that I overlooked or that I, uh, that I didn't take the time to really understand mm -hmm. at the time. And so I'm revisiting things. Isometrics would be an example. And that also, that led to a, a lot of your recent training and, the, and it led to the bulwarker, but there are certain things that, uh, you know, I feel like you, you're very, uh, uh, you have, people have strong convictions about training and, and ideas and I get that. And, and believe me, I'm, I'm as hard headed as can be when with a lot of the things that I'm talking about. But uh, I think there's opportunities and it's a very mature um, undertaking or, or uh, a very mature um, approach. approach or mindset to say, hey, let's, uh, let's take a second look. Let's take a third look. Maybe there's something of value there. And in these particular cases, uh, you know, I haven't talked much about my own experience with isometrics much but there's some really powerful stuff there that i completely overlooked i mean i just totally you know i had always read oh isometrics were not very uh, useful it was just a fad back in the 60s and it's been superseded by all this other stuff and so it was totally worthless and that's what i grew up you know that was my mindset because that's what i had always read i didn't take the time to go in and understand what else was going on there and some of the other factors, even stuff that was that was right in front of me that I should have really taken the time to, to go into. Um, but hey, here we are now and, and you're getting tremendous value out of something that you didn't pay any attention to for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I had exactly the same experience with isometrics in general. The people that I respected um, Arthur Jones, for example, you know, basically said isometrics were spectacular, a spectacular failure. Mm. You know, he said they're, you know, you, you do a set, go to momentary muscular failure, and when you can't move and you're trying to, that's an isometric component of the set. He thought that was a benefit, but in the context of pure isometrics, where you just go to the movement and you're pushing or pulling or squatting or whatever as hard as you can and you can't move. He didn't think that was worth anything. And I didn't think it was worth anything for a very long time. Yeah. You know, here I am in my 60s, I gave it a try and it was like, wow, that's, that's, that's good. And, and I, I surprised myself. You know, which is a goal of, of any legitimate research is you're trying to surprise yourself. You're not trying to validate what you already think you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's more useful to discover something you didn't know mm -hmm. or to learn that something you believed or something you thought was not completely correct. I mean, that's how science develops. So, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm glad I gave these a try and uh, you know, I'm glad I gave the isometrics a try, and I'm glad I gave Bulwarker a try, instead of being closed-minded. Mm -hmm. um, you know, clo closed-minded is fun. You <laughs> can have your opinions, and you can get set in your ways, and you know, you can grump about anything else. I suppose that's that's fun, but it's more fun to try new stuff and um, you know, see if it works. And there very well may be a place for. A lot of this stuff in a situation there's people that are saying well i'm i'm not interested at all and and yet that mindset is might be what's keeping them back uh, from some you know any kind of progress whatsoever or, or any uh you know meaningful progress i mean I'm, I'm sure that there are people out there that have beat up shoulders or beat up knees and they can't do conventional training they can't do full range training but maybe there's some application, whether it be with a bulwarker or whether it be with a chest expander or even just a barbell where you can train isometrically in a certain way and at least get the muscles firing in some capacity. And if you can get that happening, you get blood flow, you get healing hormones and so on and so forth. 
it's at least a way to make some kind of progress to where perhaps no progress is possible uh, in, uh, in a conventional manner. There's recent research about isometric training comparing men in their 20s to men in their 60s and 70s. And specifically what they were looking for was, will the isometric training trigger the release of testosterone and growth hormone mm -hmm. in the body? And what they found was in the younger guys, the answer is yes, absolutely. Okay, which is not a big surprise because you know they're younger guys. In the older guys, they found two very interesting things. One was properly performed isometric exercises will trigger enormous increases in the body's production and release of testosterone and growth hormone, okay? So basically all natural big jump in testosterone, big jump in growth hormone. That's no, finding number one. Finding number two, for the older guys, it really happens the most from leg exercises, leg isometrics. And I believe in this research study, the leg exercises were wall six, <laughs> okay? Not, and, and I may be wrong on that, or there may be several studies where they've done different things, but the point is the simple exercise of the wall sit which is fairly gentle on your knees and hips and lower back. I mean, you know, if you're 60 or 70 and you're banged up and there's nothing else you can do and all you can do are isometric wall sits, that alone can trigger chemical changes in your body that keep you strong, keep you muscular, keep you healthy, keep you fit, keep you having fun. That's huge. And that's something that we didn't know. You know, we didn't know, but they've do, they're doing the research now. There's a lot of research on isometric training, and it is incredibly effective in ways that people never suspected. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, there, are, there are protocols. We can go into this in detail on another show, but there are protocols using certain types of isometrics that have been found to actually reduce blood pressure. And it's certain types and don't just go out there and start doing it. It's, it's longer duration isometrics, not going at 100%. You know, usually like two minutes at 30%, um, you know, which is a very fascinating thing. There's all kinds of really good benefits to exercise that we're only learning about now because the research, they, they didn't used to do the research. They just, the medical and research community was distrustful of exercise for a long period of time. Mm. And then they were enamored of aerobic exercise and all the research was about aerobic exercise. And, you know, how many calories do you burn and, and so on and only in recent years, maybe the last 20 years or so, and increasingly the last 10 years, have they started to do a lot of meaningful research about uh, strength training exercise and its health and fitness benefits. And what they're finding is that they're enormous. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of stuff that I grew up reading as the conventional wisdom um, needs a rethink. Sure. Um, you know, and so that, again, that's another reason for people to try new stuff and, you know, continue to keep an open mind and grow and, and uh, you know, test, experiment, you know, find out if something works for you. Um, if it does, great. Um, if not, that's fine. You've done an experiment, the experiment with something else and find something else that works. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the, some of the primary articles written by Bob Hoffman in the early 60s, it was his feeling that the miracle of isometrics was not isometrics in and of itself, but it was that it provided a means that anyone could get in a workout without 
needing a lot of equipment and you know men women children old old people whatever the case was as a nation if everyone all of a sudden started training and increasing and improving their physical abilities a, a certain percentage then it would be good for the the, the nation overall that, that in, increasing production and and health and and you know all these things that were good so it was his if you look at the the statements and the the uh, the primary documents and the articles um you know his feeling he would say things like maybe it's not as good as a barbell uh, and obviously he wanted to sell as many barbells as he could but at the same time if you're looking at the greater good and the greater context of what isometrics can bring it was a way for people to get started a large population of people to at least do something and now we're finding out uh, through the the research and the technology is caught up to where we can generate information and data that wasn't possible with prior uh, levels of technology that there's some even greater benefit there than we even realize but i think bob hoffman's notion that hey this is this can be for everyone this is the great importance and the great value mm -hmm. Um, I, I think there's that's absolutely right on. If everybody in the United States had started barbell training, dumbbell training, isometric training, bodyweight calisthenics, whatever, back in the 60s, when the isometric revolution hit, when Hawkins materials came out, had started training and had continued training to the present. And everyone who was born was taught how to train and did the training and everyone in the US was doing some kind of workout three, four, five times a week. Whatever kind of workout it was, I don't care if it's barbells, dumbbells, chest expanders, bull worker workouts, body weight workouts, you know, anything combination of it, whatever you want to do, but everyone was doing it. Can you imagine the health and fitness of the United States right now in 2021, what it would be compared to what it is? It would be a different world, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, that was Hoffman's vision. It was the vision of a lot of um, early pioneers of health and fitness and, um, you know, I guess it's to some degree, it's it's the vision that you and I uh, continue to promote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a uphill battle, but <laughs> we continue to promote it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground and uh, we also opened up the door for some future episodes uh, delving into um, isometrics mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a greater detail. Uh, but I think this one, uh, we definitely, um, I think, I hope created some situations and some opportunities for people to rethink some things that maybe they uh, they ought to, uh, you know, just have some second or third thoughts about mm -hmm. some things that they, some notions. Yeah, yeah. You know, the the, the takeaway is this, keep an open mind. You know, you, you never know everything that would be good to know. And you may not know what you think you know. And you can always change, you can always grow, you can always learn new stuff. Um, as I said, I surprised myself with the isometrics and I surprised myself with the bulwark. Mm. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm glad I took the time to find out firsthand by try, you know, testing it myself uh, that the isometric training is really good and that the bull worker training is really good and that the bull worker in particular for a guy who's got, you know, a lifetime of uh, shoulder problems that goes back to his days as a high school wrestler. Um, it's a, a good tool for strengthening those shoulders and, you know, make, making uh, older aching joints uh, feel a lot better. So kudos to the people who put it out. It's a, it's a good tool. So thanks for suggesting this topic. It's a good topic. Sure, sure. And if anybody has any questions, um, reach out and post comments. If you have any, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on things. 
and we'll wrap this one up, but uh, certainly a plenty of opportunity to, to address this and related topics in future shows. Sounds good. So long, everyone. <laughs>